All righty. Good evening again. This is Ron. Uh, Monday already. And uh, see if we have any questions on yesterday. We uh, we we pretty much talked about uh, the 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 film uh, the, the documentary that Kathy had suggested to us a couple of days ago, uh, looking at the uh, Trump White House and and some of the background, some of the stuff behind the scenes that no one was aware of. So uh, it, it was an eye opener to say the least. So any questions about that or anything else for that matter? You have any anything on your mind? Anything you want to discuss? This is Vermel. Hey, Vermel, how are you? Fine, and you? How was your day? I had a great day. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. My question stems around yesterday in discussing the Russia with Levy. Uh -huh. We asked, the question was asked, why should we vote if they are of the same apple, but different means of getting where they want to go? Um, Sage kind of explained it. And I was hoping that maybe he would reiterate that again. Okay. Okay. Um, what you you want the question that you ask is why should we vote, right? Yes. The most same. Yes. Okay. Uh, three three one. Would you mute your phone, please? Um. The reason we should vote is because. That is the method to have an influence on the system, regardless of how we have been mistreated by the system. Um, I don't know exactly what I said yesterday, but I said the gist of it is we should vote because um, it gives us opportunity to influence the system, but also uh, we should vote because um, we are in a different era, and neither one of the parties are the same. Democrat nor Republican are the same. The Republican Party that represents the mindset of um, the Southern slave, the, the slave owner period, uh, is disintegrating before our eyes, or has disintegrated. And what has been called the Democrat Party is a party that is being guided by what we put in the macro, uh, spirituality. And what I mean by that is that um, the person representing the Democrat Party in this election, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, is, um, is a, a spiritual influence uh, on the party without even knowing so. Um, the disintegration of the Republican Party means that it will never be what it was in the past. And I don't know whether I said this or not, but they will not be able to um, to uh, put up uh, any candidates for election uh, because uh, the whole party has been tainted by the consciousness of the inception of America. And now, um, that consciousness is being is being um, destroyed, and the party that we call the Democrat Party is being uh, supported. Uh, well, let me back up. It's not the Democrat Party that's being supported. It is Kamala Harris. It is the spiritual essence of her that's being supported by everyone, all walks of life. Um, from the most conservative Dick Cheney to the most liberal Bernie Sanders and everything in between. There is a, a coalescing of, a, of different groups of people from different walks of life that has never taken place in this country. And while everyone is talking about they want to save uh, the democracy, uh, understand that they are attempting to save something that never existed and what's being formed in its place are, is 
an opportunity for balance, an opportunity for all of humanity to be on a level playing field with a nation having um, the heart or the or the heart of humanity uh, in their hand, meaning that they want to do what's best for humanity. And because of that, the voting will, will um, bring that into fruition. And when you begin to give people what they need to live, opportunity to be able to purchase a home, opportunity to be able to make a better life for themselves, um, these are kind. These kinds of opportunities um, are not easily given up. Just like um, uh, Obamacare was not easy to to uh, give up, meaning that over sixty times they tried to end it, but they couldn't. And that's because uh, there are people, regardless of um, who they were supporting, there are people who are benefiting from it. And and and. Um, we are on, on track to becoming a nation. And without us voting, that would never happen. You have to use the tools, the accoutrements of the um, country in order to uh, birth a nation. I hope that covers your, uh, helps. I hope that helps you, um, Vermeil. It Any does. Question? Could it also be safe to say that voting has a spiritual connection as well because it connects us to all those who have come before us? It, it says that we, we have felt your pain and we appreciate it. We are all one. So I, 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 it's not just, a, a, you know, casting a vote. To us, I think it has a, a a really stronger meaning behind it. So, anyway, I, I, agree. I agree with you. Um, what we are seeing is uh, what we're becoming aware of, rather, uh, is how a vote can be made to be spiritual, and I believe that it it, it um is being guided yeah. by spirituality. Because would you mute your phones, please? It is guided by spirituality because that is our desire. Um, that is the energy that we have infused into into this environment, this community, this society. So yes, it is a spiritual entity now. <clears throat> Before that, we were voting for the lesser two evils because of politics, and and that has totally changed. That's all I'm saying. Does that make sense, Ron? Yes, sir. Thank you. My second question to that is, how will all that affect other nations, other countries? Um, when you have the right person at the helm, um, you are able to uh, positively if, uh, have, a, have a positive effect on other people who are not living uh, in the boundaries of what we call America by virtue of uh, changing the attitude of the strongest country on earth and actually the, the most um, powerful country on earth because of money and um, weaponry. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that, if I may. Um, right now, uh, when we look at what's happening uh, in uh, Lebanon, um, that the action that's being taken in Lebanon is um, act, is um, being guided by the the uh, spiritual um, by the energy rather that needs to be repurposed. Uh, this is a political move on behalf of Netanyahu, and the political move is because. Um, he wants to influence the election in this country. He he understands that by uh, by um, escalating the war into Lebanon, there are that, that puts Biden 
and uh, Harris in an uncomfortable position because if Biden decides that he's not going to send any more weaponry uh, to um, Israel because they are violating uh, international law, then that's going to create a problem um, with the Jewish vote in this country. Because like I said some time ago, that's who run the country. The other part of that is if they if they finance him, continue to send him weaponry and money, then that's going to upset Palestinians and Africans in this country. So they're in a very tedious position. And Netanyahu knew that. And this is just a last ditch effort to get Donald Trump elected. So there is a way out of it. And the only way that I can I see out of it uh, is to um, enforce uh, the law that's on the books, that's under the um, under the um, authority of the uh, State Department to um, uh, uh, refuse to send weapons because of the violations of um, international law. And that law has never been enforced against Israel. So, but anyway, that is an example of how, how the rest of the world is affected by what happens in this country. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions or comments? I have a quick comment. Um, and I think with um, Kamala in power, we'll begin to focus more on other things besides Israel and have a more compassionate outlook for Africa um, and help to deal with some of the things that are going on there. I agree that's with you. my desire anyway. No, that's our desire. Uh, definitely our desire. And I do believe that um, flesh and blood didn't bring that to you. It's a spiritual necessity that we put that in the macro. Thank you. I agree. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Ron? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, there were a couple of things that uh, we went over we looked at yesterday and uh that got my attention and 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 kind of talk about where we are now and and what what we are seeing in the earth and uh i i have a uh kind of a What is it? Um, kind of a what if sort of thing, or a uh, what's it called? Um, but anyway, I, I'm looking at this. I I think as you you've we've talked about that. Uh, we're in a new place and 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 we we talked about what that means and and I, I think I was looking at something in the scriptures and what I saw in the scriptures in Genesis was uh looking at the creation story and there's a part of it that says let there be light and let there be light to me is expressing intercourse. Let there be light is allowing the darkness and the light to be what it was supposed to be. And it it, it uh, brings that to a oneness. I think uh, in the same vein, we are doing that 
with the so-called heaven and earth. Uh, we, we are allowing that to be what it, it was supposed to be in, in the beginning. Uh, I have always been fascinated with our journey that led us to looking at what beginning looks like. Uh, we've, we've done it through the scriptures, looking at uh, the encounter with Jesus and Nicodemus and, and, and dissecting that. Uh, we, we looked at it from the perspective, excuse me, of Genesis. And then we looked at it through, uh, through a different eye that we've never seen it before. And we start looking at uh, African history before the scriptures were written and who we were and even some of the tribes and things we looked at. And we moved on to uh, uh, looking at Kemen and, and uh, the Kushite kingdoms and what that meant. And then a whole journey changed to, uh, to me. It became uh, not just a, 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 a Bible study, it became a spiritual journey. And, and uh, throughout all of this, we start seeing things in the atmosphere. We start talking about uh, 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 spiritual things like uh, stargates and, and, and planets aligning and, and looking at the energy of all of that. So, um, and, and pulling that together and looking at it from the perspective of Genesis, uh, I, I, I saw something here. Um, I was, I was uh, in... The, the book Spirituality Before Religion, Spirituality Before Religion talks about the human being and the human being, uh, it, it speaks of the body and the purpose of the body. And it talks about that uh, uh, spiritual journey that each one of us needs to take as we study and see who we are. You don't know who you are until you take this spiritual journey. And uh, so I was looking at that, and particularly on uh, uh, the pyramid text and and as the seed festival, uh, and and it was explaining something that I thought was very interesting. It talked about this festival uh, that ties in with the pyramids, and it, the the festival was the festival that the pharaoh would go through because to see if he was uh, physically fit spiritually or uh, mentally fit to lead the people. So periodically he would have to go through this and they, they likened it uh, to, to the Olympics. And, uh, and part of that journey, part of those uh, 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 tests that he would have to do ran through the pyramids. And uh, so when, when you look at this uh, and, and the, the uh, and somebody that may have, have talked about this uh, uh, before, and I missed it, but it even talked about the, the pyramids, how they were lined up as the, the Orin uh, or constellation of stars. And and uh, and I did not quite see how that fit, although I know that uh, Orin was, uh, you, you understand the past, because Orin was a warrior, is that correct? There, there's... Uh... It was lined line up in the uh, constellation of, of uh, Orion, and and um, uh, all the pyramids were, and this is because um, the energy of Orion is what was um, um, the source of, of the power of the Pharaoh. With the understanding, like you said, he running through the pyramids, but also not just physical fit. He had to prove himself to be mentally fit, but more importantly, spiritually fit. And the, and the spiritual, ess, uh, spiritual uh, essence of that uh, was represented by the presence uh, of the energy of the star, of the constellation of Orion. And yes. also around that festival uh, was also uh, a celebration of the Pharaoh's continued uh, life in the earth, as well as his interest into the ap afterlife. Okay, that's the part that that got my attention. Pastor was the afterlife because in in their un understanding and explaining this, 
Uh, I, I think what we're in, doing right now mirrors what this festival was. Uh, we we talk about the energy of the stars. We talk about uh, uh, the ancestors. So, and, and I don't think it's so much that I'm go. We are going through this to to uh, uh, prepare for Ron's death or for James's death or for Audrey's death. I think this is the death of those ancestors who have come before us. So what we do now stands in the, in the gap for that. Or uh, at the end of this festival. And and I'm 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 kind of somebody else may have looked at this that that can help me if I don't I'm skipping some stuff. Uh, the pyramid text talked about a mystical experiences and what that was. In the mystical experiences, it talks about the visions of the gods. Uh, it talks about the uh the cosmic acts as ascent. Uh, uh, which, which was talking about a flight away from the earth and uh, uh, and away from your physical realm, uh, uh, looking at who you are spiritually. But the one that that really stood out to me uh, at the end of this was your spiritual rebirth. And uh, this was uh, 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 the spiritual being as well as the physical being, the direct experience of one's spiritual immortal core is often expressed in language of a rebirth. So the person feels that he or she has been born again spiritually. And what I take that to mean is looking at who we are. His was a physical journey. His was a physical journey that he had to go through to see this. And I'm saying when we declared that I am willing to give up anything. I'm willing to give up free will and give up anything. It started a journey. And the being reborn or be, running back to beginning is not something that you just say, I want to do. You automatically go there when you start this journey. It takes you back to beginning. And the going back to beginning is what is, is a collapses time, so to speak. So, the rebirth of being born again not only ties into you, you become balanced within yourself, but it allows you to become balanced for your ancestors. It allows you to even become balanced for those who are coming after you. So as we look at this, and, and uh, as I said, let there be light has been our cry without saying that it has been our search, searching for truth. It is a, 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 a journey through light and darkness where we have uh, we have uh, uh, revealed things. We have straightened out the chaos. We have removed things. We have understood things. We have explained things in the earth. We have uh, had a better understanding of what goes on in the universe. And um, we have... Uh, <clears throat> Something that was said yesterday that, that got my attention uh, when we, we were talking about consciousness. Uh, we were, I wrote something now. Uh, a relationship with beginning and and and, and the earth. Uh, what, what is our consciousness? What, what are those things that we value? What is your mindset? So all of this journey, these journeys, or, or have moved us to a different mindset. So what my attempt was to, is, is to uh, kind of link all of this to all the things that we talked about and all the things that are going on in the earth. Because the place that you are now, fear does not live here. Fear is not in this realm. Uh, even death as we know it is not in this realm. Uh, uh, being concerned, being anxious about things are not in the place that we are now. So uh, we we have moved beyond those physical things and what the, the, the deterioration of the earth is based on the, 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 the linear thing called time that we left behind. So what I'm seeing is or what I'm trying to explain is I think we have exposed what time is and moved to a different place to uh, uh, see things in a more uh, 
lofty way or different type of way without seeing it in a logical way and being able to, to understand it and move things without doing so in a selfishly greed kind of way. So, and, and I'm, I'm, don't feel like I'm explaining this right, but go ahead, Pastor. I, I, um, you, you mentioned um, the afterlife and um, returning to beginning. Um, when um, the committing priest talked about the afterlife and preparation, preparing rather the Pharaoh for the afterlife, for the life beyond this, all it was saying that that uh, the spiritual essence of who you are has a life beyond this one. And and um the 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 um message delivered there through the um through Kim it was that the one who goes into afterlife enters the sea of reeds and and the afterlife is beyond that. Well that's where the story of Moses came from. When he says that Moses crossed the Red Sea, that's a, that that translation was manipulated on purpose. That it should have been translated from whether it's the Hebrew, the Aramaic, or anything. It should have been the the Sea of Reeds. And 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 the story of Moses does not tell the story that we have been told. If you look at the truth of of the story of Moses. What you see is you and your consciousness. When you find yourself trapped in the consciousness of the earth, then you have opportunity to move beyond the station that you're in, that cramped space, and you go through this sea of reeds and you and you reach a, a different life, an afterlife. Afterlife. Uh, can be lived or experienced rather on this earth. When we experience spirituality, uh, when we live, when we are in the earth but not of the earth, it is at that point that we are in a in our bodies experiencing uh, uh, what the afterlife uh, feels like or, uh, or what it looks like. Meaning that begin and when you return to beginning, you are always in a state of spirituality. You're not in a human state of mind when you return to beginning. So, so beginning is 100% spiritual. And you return to beginning more than once. When we went to the beginnings in terms of humans in the earth, that was different than what, when Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must return to beginning. That was different. The difference is that spiritual beginnings happens several times. Every time we talk about another dimension, we are talking about a spiritual birth, a, a new beginning. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Yes. That's where we are with beginnings. So so right now, uh, we are in a space of beginning. Why do I say that? There has been more celestial activity in the last eight weeks than it has been in the last two years. And the, and, the, the, and the brunt of all of the celestial action has been with the moon more than anything else. And the moon is indicative or represents the essence of feminine energy. And it, it, that speaks volumes to me. The influx or the, or the uh, yeah, the influx of, of feminine energy into the earth strengthens what we are talking about when we talk about the goddess, when we talk about the spiritual uh, essence that Kamala Harris represents, when we talk about um, the African mother being on the throne, that's, the, that's what I'm talking about. When, 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 um, uh, when, when I um, say that we, that we are at a beginning, and in this beginning where we are now, we are we are doing the same thing that happened in Kemet. The reverence, the recognition, the embracing, the expression of feminine energy and, and embracing it because of how it has uh brought our uh, um help us navigate our 
station in the earth so that we can be beneficial to all of mankind, the nurturing uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the birth. Only way you can have a new birth, a birth period, it has to come through a womb. And I'm saying that we have come through a womb of, um, of um, chaos. And I, and I say that loosely because I'm trying to think of another word because it wasn't total chaos. But we are in a state now where we are only in the midst of chaos by choice. Yeah. If you know who you are and, and, you, and you are chaotic. You did it by choice. You, you have the only thing you need to do to rise above chaos in your life is remind yourself who you are. This is happening for a reason. The reason I might not know right now, but I know it's for the benefit of humanity, that kind of thing. Audrey? Um, I have a question regarding um, Ron was festivals and and then you tied in um, the sea of reeds crossing into a new beginning, that sort of thing. Um, how how does the 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 Jewish high holy days fit into all of that? And I uh, I, I kind of see it, but yeah. I would appreciate some elaboration on that. Uh, the, the Jewish uh, holy days are an offshoot from the what happened in uh, Egypt, just like everything else is. Uh, most yeah. of them, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and there are there are some uh, that that fits into the year in terms of the the um, years the calendar that emanated uh, in Egypt because it does not use January as the beginning of the year is March. So, but most of them are just made up rituals in order to um, manipulate people into becoming a part of. Um, but I kind of feel like there's a lot of powerful energy associated with that. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it's associated with any sort of festival or whatever they would call it in 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 Kemet. The 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 energy that's being appropriated, for example, Rosh Hashanah. The the energy that's being appropriated for that is the energy from Kemet. And the, and and and, and uh, just like we would experience our energy in church and say the spirit is high today. We we, we felt that because it was being a, the energy was being appropriated for use in a religious setting. But it's the same energy. And, and just like just like our time has been corrupted, so could energy. And what I mean by that is this. If you are in religion and you are waiting for Jesus to come get you and take you to heaven, then that in, you, you are being corrupted by religion and don't know it. Because you are not you you do you're not aware of your spiritual essence. You say that you're spiritual. You say that, but what spiritual means is something totally different than what it is. So that I, that is a corruption of you, and the corruption of you because you are spirit. That's the spiritual essence that's that's been corrupted in you. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so it is. It is really this the energy of you of one realizing who they are, and in that way it becomes a new beginning. Yes, when you realize who you are. In addition to that, uh, when we look at Mayat, um, what we also see is that Mayat was never considered a goddess. It was called the goddess by Egyptologists, but Mayat was seen as principle. 
and the power of the principles of Mayot was spirituality. Yeah. So, so when you live according to the principles of Mayot, uh, and the principles of Mayot are very simple. You don't have to remember them because they're simple. Justice. Um, treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Um, see all humans as human. Do the right thing. When we look at that, those principles rather, what it does also, Audrey, is erases free will. Everyone is born to follow the principles of Maya, to teach the children right from wrong. That's basically it. But when you teach your child that they are superior to somebody else, that is ignoring the truth of humanity, which is ignoring the principles of Mayotte. That you didn't, you, you're not doing that by free will as much as you're doing it because you are ignoring the righteous principles that keeps order in the earth. Because the principles of Mayotte was, was designed to bring balance to the earth. Matter of fact, if you look at uh, Kemet, what you will find is that when when Ra called everything, when uh, God called everything into being, the, the principles of Mayotte were birthed at the same time, which means that the principles that bring stability to the essence of this earth environment were in play at the same time that everything else came into existence. And, and, and a choice was made not to adhere to them. So how do I deal with that? How do I see that in the world of physical humans with all different peoples in different spaces ge geographically? When the African traveled the globe and taught people, they were teaching the principles of Mayak. They were teaching spirituality. And when you and, and people embraced it, even though what the Native Americans do now was given to them by the African, over the years, it, it comes in different names. They, they have different names, but the principles are the same. They didn't kill an animal just to kill an animal. They would only take what they needed. That's the that's a principle of harmony. However, when you make a decision that you're not going to obey, you're not going to walk the lines or, or um, embrace the, the principles of Maya, that means when I say that the African went into Europe as well. And that was a decision made not to follow the principles of the African. Matter of fact, they were attacked. And, and what happened? Everything began uh, to, to devolve into something more brutal than the earth has ever seen. So that mindset was developed. It wasn't so much a free will saying that, well, I have, I have the freedom to do this as I want to. It's saying that what you're telling me is not worth it. And I'm not, I'm not going to abide by it. I'm going to do what I want to do. So, so I, I, I see free will a bit differently than I have um, previously seen it and taught it for that matter. So with all of that um, being, being said, how do we, how, how do we, how do, how do we deal with this thing called time? Well, before I say that, let me ask you if there are any questions or comment, please. Is it making sense, y'all? Is the, am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Am I making sense to you? This is Vermel. I'm a little stuck on, and I think this is physically, I'm a little stuck on seeing how time 
is enfolded into space, like how we're moving out of the the thought of time. Uh, okay, I'll deal with that in a moment. But I okay. If anyone had any questions in reference to what has already been said, or comments. Well, I don't know whether you follow that you follow me or not, with the exception of a couple of people. So, but I, I assume that you are getting it. If you're not and don't know what to ask, just say I'm not. I don't understand. Okay. Time. The difference with time is that time has, ex has existed from from um the inception of the of um the calendar the when you, when you when you make a calendar what you have done is codify time because you have to look at time or measure time based upon that calendar Time tells you when to plant, when to harvest, etc. When you, the African, the the um, priests of of Kimi understood that there were twenty four hours in a day. They've always known that, but the difference is this: they lived with time, as opposed to living in time. When you are living in time, your life is controlled by time. When you are living with time, you are the determiner of how time is going to affect you. And it's simple. If you, if you are able to say, tomorrow at six o'clock, I'm going wherever, that's you living with time. But when you get in a panic, because you're not there at six o'clock. That's time controlling you. Does that make sense? So yeah. Far, yeah. That's time controlling you. So the, if I have a meeting at six, I leave on time for my meeting. I don't get there. I used to call. I used to be upset within myself about it. I'm going to be late, blah, 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 blah. No, nah, it doesn't matter. And every single time I've gotten there, if it were a meeting, the people were just getting there. Or they came a little bit later. Something happened with them as well. Every single time that that happened with me, if it was an appointment, there was somebody in before me who it took longer with. But the, when I was when I was uh, out of sorts about it, it was just the opposite. So what happened? I created the chaos, or I allowed time to create chaos in me, as opposed to me living with time. Does that make sense? If you yes, it does. I can see that. If, if it doesn't, I'm not just talking about for me. I'm talking about anybody. Does that make sense? Yeah. We. So, when we talk about, well, let me say this. When you allow time to control you, that means you, time has been corrupted. That's all. Now, oh, God, do I have to say it? When you as an African deal with time, because you are living with it and not allowing it to control you, they say that's in work time. You, 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 black folk time. Why? Because you were late. You could be late because you got it on uh, traffic, got in traffic, but we and I started on color people time. That's racist. That's, that's saying that time controls you. 
as opposed to you living with it. Does that make sense? That is racist. And, 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 and that removes it from where it was intended to be um, in, in the beginning. We, we are, we are, are, we are spiritual entities. So when we talk about living uh, or the obliteration of time, that's not going to happen. A better way to talk about it is living beyond time. You live with it when you are uh, interacting with this material environment. Are, are we good so far? Yes. yes. When we are in this space of meditation, where we are, are interacting with the ancestors, uh, where the universe is, are we being guided by the universe? We are in rhythm with it, that's mayo. That's what keeps us in rhythm with the universe. That's Mayan. And then that, that's when we are living beyond time. Have you meditated and did not realize how long you were there? You were outside the realm of time. I remember all of us, the teachers in particular, well, the teachers really, uh, we meditated. All of us said we're going to meditate at 12 o'clock. And overwhelmingly, every one of us ended our meditation at the same time and didn't know it. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? That's a lesson. That lesson that was given to us then is a lesson for today because we didn't understand it then. That's living beyond time. But it does not erase time because when you are human, you, you learn to live with it, and you learn to live without it. Does that make sense? You cannot measure how long it's going to take you uh, to meditate. You can't measure that. If you measure it, it's just a, a ritual that you're doing. And, and, and it has to be more than that. Um, When, when you understand that time is malleable, I have read several places where if you walk close to the Pyramid at Giza, it changes the time on your watch because it has that much pull on the universe. Why is that so? Every single pyramid is, is um, linked to the rhythm of the universe. And if you move to a different space, time means something different. And the lesson for that is, it's three hours different in California. So what makes it three hours different? The S-U-N. Am I right? The sun. Yeah. Oh, yes. I just, so these principles seem so complicated, but they're not. They are really simple. They're, and, they're more, more simple than we than we realize, Pastor. We we we're 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 in it and we don't always know it. A, a mother sits down with her baby and she starts rocking her baby and she loses track of time. She's she's entered into a place. She's she's not. It, it's not just a a moment. It, it's more than that. It, it's it's a magical thing. It's a it's a spiritual thing. And that's what we're talking about. When you surrender and you become one with with self, you become one with that love. And you're looking at this this baby or or even a significant other, and you surrender to the moment. That's that's the kind of thing that 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 we talk about. Uh, I I think one of the stories in scripture even explains it. Uh, they go to the marriage supper 
and and he says, uh, she's somebody says, fill those buckets up with water. Well, those buckets are a measurement. Those are a measurement. But when it was turned to wine, it overflowed. So when you become spiritual, there is no measurement for you. You're outside of the realm of time. So it, it is saying that uh, you, when you see this person as a separate person from you, then that is a measurement because you have not bonded. You have not uh, uh, freely given in of yourself and become one that you no longer become him a male and you a female. You become one. And when that happens, when that merger happens, then you are no longer bound by time. You are walking in as spiritual beings. So, so I think we're there all the time and we just don't realize it. Religion keeps yeah. you from realizing it. Religion keeps you in the bondage of time also. The rigidity of it, the rituals, it's the first sign that says time to take communion. When um, communion, as it is written, has nothing to do with um, a ritual. It has a spiritual meaning. So the spiritual essence that has been given to us, we have, we have been taught to disregard it. Even when we had inter interludes with uh, uh, with um, seeing things or being aware of things. I, I remember uh, when I was doing some teaching and preaching in uh, white churches, I would talk about things that were going to happen. And they would say things to me like, so you're a prophet now. Jesus was the last prophet. And then when it will happen, I asked them, so was Jesus the last prophet or is prophesying still real? And they said to me it was a coincidence. So I just left them alone. I, I ain't just deal with them anymore. So what am I saying to you? Anything that comes from the African that cannot be explained in, the, in European words do, does not exist as far as they are concerned. We have to recognize the spiritual essence of who we are. That, that is the only time that we will be able to make any roles in changing this earth, changing the mindset of the earth. We have to do that. If we were not responsible for that, then why is it that everyone came into the cave of Kemet and stole spiritual, what they call spirituality and made it religion? None of them came from any other place than, than Kemet. Why? Because that is the source of all power in this earth. You can change things when you know how to harness that power. When you bring things, when you, when you speak things into the macro and you see them taking place, that is a harnessing of the power, meaning that you are aware of who you are and how powerful you are. Say that again, but but speak to it from a position of where we are now, the things that we desire, harnessing that power, please. The, when, the, when we, the things that we desire, let's say, when we say that we want everything to be exposed, what we are doing is speaking from the spiritual essence of who we are. When we say, I'm afraid that Donald Trump is going to be reelected, we are speaking from fear. We are speaking from a mindset of fear, a mindset that has been given to us by religious slash Europeans. When we, when we 
know that Harris is going to be elected. That is spiritual. And that is how you harness power. When you see the things change, when, when, we, when we made statements about how things were going to develop and we saw it develop in that way, that is the harnessing of power of the power that you are. And I don't mean manipulation of it. No, I, I, the word magic is what it was actually used when it talks about um, magic is the source of mayor. Magic has been corrupted. Magic does not mean the manipulation of objects or, or the uh, trickery of anything. Mag magic is energy. And the source of Mayotte is energy, which means that if the source of Mayotte is energy, when you embrace the principles of Mayotte, you bring in the, you bring principles into reality, I mean, sorry, into the earth environment that brings balance to the earth. When you don't do that, when you, when you don't see uh, the spiritual as the source, then what you actually do is seek religion to bring things uh, to a head or to make changes in the earth and it doesn't happen that's why when you we pray and we pray and nothing happens but when we speak to things and talk about them and put them in a macro we see them happening does that make sense yes yeah. magic has been corrupted by the same tongue that corrupt everything else europeans corrupted magic It's always been in existence. Magic is the energy that you do not see with your eyes. Magic, and when you see it with your eye, it is the results of your desires. When we when we look at when when I looked at the the documentary, and I saw that documentary as being us in terms of how what we are, that that what happened, um, what happened in terms of them trying to uh, dig up these false charges, that's religion. It's all, it, it's confusing, it's manipulative, and, and it's all about God go bless you with $10, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Live. What you see is repentance. You what you see is being hurt because you were blind when you were in religion. Now you see clearly with your eye. You understand what it means to be spiritual. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the difference. We did not see this this um documentary coming, but we're the ones responsible for it. Why is it that there has never been anything on TV like that until now? Why? I do not discount anything from having emanated from us because of our desire for humanity. Our desires are not for us as individuals. Our desire is collective beyond the borders of this God, this nation, or this country rather, I'm sorry. Forgive me for making that mistake, godly. From the, mm -hmm. uh, our desires go far beyond the borders of this country. It goes far beyond our state in this country, hmm. far beyond that. There is no excuse for anyone who has interacted with us, especially during a period of time, over a period of time, 
There's no excuse for not knowing who you are. There's no excuse for you being afraid that spirituality is not real or that magic is not real. There's no excuse for that. None. Why is there no excuse for that? Because everything that we have talked about has guided us to understanding the nature, the essence of what it means to be spiritual. I used to tell kids, if you go into class and don't even pay any attention, you just sit in that class, you, you should make a seat at least. If you make anything less than that, then you weren't even in the class. Your body was. So what I'm saying is this. If you've been in the midst of this group over time, you ought to have enough understanding of spirituality for you to rise above the ignorance of those who don't. And I'm, ignorance is not derogatory in that. It, is, it, it simply means you're unaware. That's all. I didn't say dumb. I said unaware. And there is no way you can do that and not be aware of something. Now, that harkens me back to, to what we have called free will. You have made a decision that may not doesn't matter. You've made a decision that you're going to do what you're going to do regardless wow. of how it affects other people. And that decision affects you more than it does other people because there are those of us who are truly standing in the gap, being a shield between unawareness, damaging the people, and giving them opportunity to become aware. You're not going to hurt them. We're not going to let that happen. When we said, not on my watch, we became a fence around humanity. And we are the energy of the pyramids in the midst of a, of, of a country, of a world that does not have a clue as to what direction it should take in regards to humanity. Does that make sense? Question? Yes. Comments? Yeah, good evening, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I just want to say, you know, Ron, you know, I thank you for starting us off in terms of talking about the scriptures in Genesis when you say, let there be light. Yes. And in that light, you know, Pastor spoke of the sun and the moon. And as we had come to appreciate the eye with regards to how the sun uh, teaches us in terms of being able to appreciate life in terms of the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm grateful to be able to appreciate that understanding because with the pyramids, and talking about the um, festival, the set festival, you know, it, it's about a celebration. And I think that celebration, you know, helps us to be able to appreciate the journey that we on, just like the Pharaoh had to be responsible in terms of not just um, knowing Maya, but to speak it and to do it. You know, that's the responsibility I believe that we have when we come into awareness now in terms of our responsibility to not just think Maya, not just to speak Maya, but to do it. And so I'm grateful in terms of just being able to appreciate, you know, how the light 
how the heat and the sound energies that we are experiencing through the frequencies and vibrations of uh, what as above, so below. And so yeah. I think that is all relevant in terms of our continued spiritual rebirth. So I just wanted to share those thoughts. I'm done. Thank, Thank you, George. You. Thank you. I got a question. When George said, spoke about the, uh, the, the seed festival, and we talked about it earlier, about the uh, Pharaoh having to go through um, this gambit of things in order to prove himself fit to remain Pharaoh. What happened if he didn't? Yeah. What happened if he could not complete it? And and how did he prepare for it? You know, I, I we, we said at the beginning that we this is talking about us. If we could look at the scriptures and, and, and see, pick out the principles of them and say that this is talking about us and even even uh, uh, see the expression of it in our actions, uh, this too is talking about us, even more so. So it says here, as, as we pointed out, physically, mentally, soulfully, and spiritually fit to continue his reign. So that means if he didn't, if he didn't fulfill that, he could not continue his reign. Could not continue his reign. So that ends a dynasty. Because the next one is, they are chosen by the priest. The priests are the ones who chose them. And as long as they were true to uh, what was expected of them, and as long as they could complete the festival, they were fine. Now keep in mind that a dynasty is anywhere from 150 to 200 years. When we talk about first, second, third dynasty, we're talking about 600 or more years. Because the dynasty runs as long as the um, pharaoh comes from the same lineage. That's, that's how long the dynasty lasts. A dynasty is, it means rather, the, the, peop, the ones who come from a common origin, which is, of course, lineage. That's where lineage came from in England. Lineage in terms of what you want to call it, royalty or whatever, that's where it came from. There is nothing that was not an offshoot from Kim. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Regardless how it was changed, that's where the principle came from. You change principles only when you want to manipulate others. You change principles to fit what you want. If the principle, if you view the principle as being sound, if you live or living by that principle, you see no need to change it. You see no need to manipulate it. Truth is the greatest principle of all. When truth when you are searching for truth, you find yourself. And when you become that truth, you begin to elevate. Your consciousness changes. What was once, what you saw once as consci consciousness, has all of a sudden become unconsciousness. When you become conscious of who you are, 
you can see how unconscious you were. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. So tie yeah. that to the responsibility. I'm, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Audrey. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing with the magic. I mean, you don't necessarily realize what it is, but when you look back, you can see it. Yes. Yeah. You, you, yes, you see the you see the, the uh, manifestation of the results of the magic. You see it, and if we can't see that with this election, we're totally blind. Because there are so many things happening that are totally different than anything that's ever happened in the history of this country, in the history of the world. Think about it. This. This is magical. Ron? Oh, Drew, are you finished? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Thanks. Okay. Ron? No, you, you, you were talking about consciousness, and I was saying again, tie that because we 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 we're 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 at a we we're at a place of responsibility. Uh we we started this journey off trying to understand what salvation is. That's what got us here. It brought us all together. And we, 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 we saw that it was nothing like we have been taught over the years. And we saw the inclusion of not just the people on this phone, but all of mankind. And that took us to another space. And, and we've been growing and growing that. So here's where we are now. And, and what we are looking at as we use the vision of this election as the 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 the, the thing to see you, you know to focus on but this is so much bigger and and we're looking at who we are what we're doing and what what the universe the expectations of the universe uh from someone who is finally not being religious but looking for truth and and trying to set balance back in order so when you talk about that awareness and, and, and the magic, you know, we, we, we just tie all that together because we, we're not at a place of fear anymore. Your vibrations should be higher than anybody else that's, that's out there in the world. So nothing should shake us to that point anymore. But what brings us to truth and what elevates us to the place where we live beyond time are the principles of Maya. The power to, to exemplify in your life the principles of Maya is dependent upon how much you believe that you are spirit in a body, how much you embrace about spirituality. Yeah. When you are able to submit your humanness to spirituality or the, or the desire to learn truth and what spirituality is, that is when the principles of Mayot becomes what they are supposed to be for humanity. All we are doing when we talk about balance to mankind, when we talk about shaping a nation so it would be beneficial to humanity, all we are saying is our desire is to bring the power of the principles of Mayot for every man, not necessarily to read, but to experience. And if we don't experience them, they won't. The things we put in the macro, how does that work? When we speak about things being in the macro, it's the vibration of the universe who has put the words in our mouth 
that vibration is what brings everything into existence. So what happens is the vibration of those words are picked up by those who are seeking more. When you are seeking more, when you are seeking change, that's all the universe needs. Yeah. When you are desiring more, you are open to the, to the vibration of the universe, the rhythm of the universe. And when those words are spoken, that is no different than I create with words. That is no dif difference than speaking things into existence. I'm not talking about that house you thought you'd go get from somebody else or that car you lay hands on. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about realness, real spirituality. That's what the macro is about, the energy, the vibration of our words. Yeah. And if it were not, for the hardships that's been promised and have, and have been endured by the Democrats and Republicans, there would not be a search for more. Why is it so important that all of these people, conservatives, liberals, et cetera, that I mentioned earlier, are, are, are coalescing, not behind, but coalescing with Kamala Harris? Why? Why is that so important? Because they, without knowing it, have embraced the vibration of our desires, which is the vibration of the universe for everyone. They have embraced the rhythm of change and don't even know it. Does that make sense? Questions yes. or comments? Yes. Questions, comments? So any other questions? Ruin? This is uh, Angela. I, I have a question I wanted to ask. Um, have anybody looked into the, they were talking about a second moon, scientists saying that a second moon is coming um, September, I think it's from September the 29th to November the 25th. That's 57 days, but they were saying something about a new moon. Uh, not a new moon, but a second moon, yeah. I have not heard that. Have anyone else? Huh? I have not. I think we just we, we just completed the cycle of a, a, a blue moon, didn't we? we? We did, yeah. So that one is the only one I was aware of. I'm going to. Yeah, I have the uh, have the article. Um, yeah, I heard about it. It's it's an asteroid that's coming into to the gravity of the Earth. Uh huh. And it's going to stay in there for however many days. Um, Kathy mentioned before it gets flipped out again. Okay. So we'll have sort of a second moon for that period of time. Right. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything significant in it that we should see? I mean, spiritually? Has anybody seen, looked at it from that degree? Yes, sir. First of all, I want Audrey or, or Andrew to say what they think it is first. And then I'll, I'll say what I think it is. No, not yet. I haven't really thought about it in that regard. I, I just was looking at the, um, what was it, the 29 is 11, and then the 25 is uh, 7. And that's what, you know, that's what one of the things that uh, caught my eye. And I think, yeah, 50, it's supposed to stay 57 days, which is, Twelve. So, oh, so November. When you what day in November? Yes. Uh, September is supposed to start September the twenty fifth to November the twenty fifth. Okay. 
suppose the asteroid, which is an anomaly, which could be a source of destruction, is indicative of what's happening now in the Earth. And it is a company in not so a positive way, the moon, which is feminine energy. And Audrey said that's, that it's thrown out. That's, right? Well, that's what I just thought of. The feminine energy is going to be increased. And and when it's, when it gets the energy from it, it's going to throw it, throw it out. In yeah. other words, yeah. You you have expended all your energy. We have repurposed your energy. So bye. Can you can you see that? So, yeah, um, I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right when we need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just received a text about something. There are two sides, but only one side uh, that that is uh, a, a, that represents real change. What does that mean? If you're not representing real change, so what are you representing? Not the status quo, but a, repeti a repetition of what has been. Yeah. You could go to 1789 when the Constitution was accepted and walk your way all the way up to now, and you will see a repeat of everything that started in the beginning. It's over and over and over. We say it's different. No, it's not. It's just, it's dealt with in a different way. Is, is Trump saying anything that the slaveholders did say? No. So if he's not saying anything that the slaveholders said, then why is he saying it? What kind of effect does it have? What desired effect is it? If he's saying the same thing that slave owners say, that means that the energy of the slave owners is still here. Otherwise, he wouldn't be talking about it. Nothing changed. It looked different with our eyes, but does it feel different in your soul? If it feels different in your soul, if you, if you or at a point where you do not feel the, the shackles of slavery, please let me know. Which means that you don't feel like you're free. If I'm free, why do I have to put my hands on the steering wheel and turn the light on in my car at night when the police pull me over? That's no different than me going through the woods to pick up something from master and one of the slave chasers catches up with me and I have to show him my hands. What's the difference? Why do I have to tell my son, don't move swiftly if a policeman pull you over. Tell him everything that you're getting ready to do and do it slowly. Is that not slavery? That is mental enslavement. That is emotional enslavement. Why am I not free to go any place I want to as long I'm not hurting anyone, I'm not breaking the law? Why, no, I, can't, why I can't do that? And other people can who don't look like me. Yes, thank you, Joe. Would you uh, make sure your phone's uh, muted unless you have a question or uh, comment, please? What is it? Go ahead. Okay. Why is it 
that I can't do that. Emotionally, I feel it. Why is it that your emotions change, especially if you're African male, when it gets dark and you are in a different space? You're driving, you need gas, and you have to go through a small town in West Virginia. Why is it that you're on guard? The white man is not. Never have been. The shackles are different now. They're not made of iron. No. The shackles now have captured your emotions. The results of those irons and the attitudes that brought those irons into existence, that's what has enslaved your emotions and making every effort to enslave your soul. Religion is seeking to do that. But nothing can enslave your soul. You can believe that you, your soul, but your soul can't be enslaved. What's enslaved is your mind. And what your mind perceives has an effect on your emotions. And the mental perceptions of that African male, especially, with being pulled over by a policeman, in the middle of the night. That affects his emotions. His brain is, in, is, um, is determining what he feels. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What makes a man think it's okay to rape another man's wife while he sits on the porch with a gun in his head. And then pretends not to understand why this man doesn't trust him and this woman hates him. Why is it that he doesn't understand the reason this man want to hurt him? Because he believes in his mind that you know that you're a slave and you have no power over him. That's why. We are the salvation for humanity. Slavery ends with this election. That's why we vote. Aren't you tired of being a slave? I am. Loud and clear. The last thing I want to say is this, and we can bid each other do. The thing that got to me yesterday, I mentioned this, is how I was reared. I can hear my grandmother's voice saying, be willing to die for what you believe. Don't ask anyone to do anything that you won't do. Be willing to die. Have we, have we as Africans, have we not been through enough? Have we not endured enough pain? Should we be exempt from having people who look like us cast in votes against us? When does it end? I don't understand how you can be spiritual. You can claim the principles of Mayak and you can't see that. 
I will vote for a frog before I vote for an attitude of Trump. Kamala Harris can be on, on, on oxygen. She can, she can be uh, on a um, ventilator, barely hold on to life, and I'm going to vote for her. That's the only hope I see. We have been through enough. The pain is still here. And we need to learn, we need to not learn, we need to know what it feels like not to live in pain constantly. When that Nigerian came in this house and he thought that I was an attorney or a college professor because he saw the books, he asked me, where are you from? I said, I was born here in Union, but I'm from Africa. He, he smiled. He was asking me, did I move here from someplace else because I'm in Union? And he saw me as something, somebody different, the, the people he had encountered. But he embraced the response that I am actually from Africa. Why did he smile? Why did I say that? Because we are one. That's why. Educators. The educator is one who leads another out of ignorance. That's what educator means. One who leads another out of Ignorance, meaning leading someone from a state of unawareness to a state of awareness. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Any final questions, anybody? Comments? Good session. I hope uh hope it all made sense. And if if not, it's okay. We'll we'll talk about it again. But uh thank you. Appreciate your energy, your thoughts. And uh we will have a beautiful week and we will see you Saturday, okay? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye.